Holmgren trying to answer. He is stopped and taken away. It was at that moment where perhaps everyone realized the difference between performance and dominance when Victor Wembanyama swatted away a shot from Chet Holmgren and made him realize what he's in for. And with that moment, fans were pretty much convinced that the Rookie of the Year debate was done and dusted for this season. But hey, let's not try and build Wemby's case because of just one play over the course of the season, otherwise our singular reason to crown him the Rookie of the Year instead of Chet Holmgren will be as radical as that of the faction, which feels that Holmgren doesn't even need to be in the Rookie of the Year debate because he's not even a rookie. I just have an issue with second year guys, even if they miss the whole first year, winning rookie of the year. All of these things that NBA players do for an entire year, that makes a difference. And so I just can't agree with second year guys winning rookie of the year. Well, oh, come on now. We saw it during Ben Simmons' first season as well as during Blake Griffin's, and we're seeing it now again. And you know what? We're fine. In fact, the conversation that Chet had a season-long head start ahead of Wemby and is perhaps still getting dominated by the 7'4 juggernaut goes ahead and tilts the debate in Wemby's favor. So, about time we discuss this. Has Victor Wembanyama really ended the Rookie of the Year debate? Let's talk about it. The general theme with Wembanyama's season so far has been his ability to bounce back, and even when he's out with a minor shoulder injury right now, he has easily got the headlines pointing to him with 56 games played this season. And when it comes to his dominance within games on both ends of the floor, that has stayed consistent in his NBA tenure so far, where he fits like a glove and is outperforming every rookie in his class practically on a game-to-game -game basis. What's even astonishing for someone like Wimby is that despite his team's dismal record in the Western Conference, his personal defensive stats have made sure that he doesn't go without a fight, not just against contemporaries like Shet Holmgren, but even veterans like Rudy Gobert as well. Kins 5 reported on March 5th about Wemby's achievements and how he is actively closing the gap on the likes of Gobert towards the Defensive Player of the Year trophy with his contributions. He currently owns a defensive rating of 107.4, 10.2 rebounds per game, 1.3 steals per game, 3.4 blocks per game, league leader, and 3.0 deflections, making it the sixth best in the NBA. During February, Wembenyama reached 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 150 blocks to become the third fastest player in NBA history to record those numbers. He also became the first player in league history to have 150 plus assists, 150 plus blocks, and 75 plus three pointers in the same season. Another wildly popular narrative that tilts the debate for Wemby is the fact that Shet continues to perform in a team which is already stacked with talent, and their Western Conference record is plenty of proof for the same considering how after beating the Miami Heat recently, the Oklahoma City Thunder have now jumped to the number one spot in the West, while Wemby and Spurs continue to find their footing and are still dead last in the table. The score correctly highlighted how the Spurs are unable to win games in their article dated 5th March, but they also mentioned how Wemby is a big part of whatever the Spurs offense does, especially with his passing also improving, and the fact that he is one of those few rookies who continue to become more and more comfortable in the league as they continue to play more. Yet the one nitpick remaining is the Spurs' struggle to actually win games. Though his team went just 2-10 in February, Wembenyama finished with an even or positive plus minus in six games. The Frenchman's passing has been a big part of wins too, with the Spurs going 6-6 when he dishes out five or more dimes versus 5-25 when he has three or fewer. All this combined with the rejuvenated interest that Wemby has drawn towards the NBA, with perhaps giving the league its best Rookie of the Year race in recent memory. It's safe to say that this won't be the last time we see the best of either him or even Chet. And if we're talking about rookies, maybe even the heavily underappreciated Brandon Miller would have to submit to the kind of greatness we're seeing from these two. With the way they've debuted, we can safely say the league is in good hands for the future at least for the next 10 to 15 years. And on that note, we come to the end of this video. Do make sure you like it, hit that subscribe button to join our growing community, and let us know in the comments if you think Wemby has actually ended the Rookie of the Year debate for this season, and we will see you in the next one.